invited me over to check out your new sim. Hey, no problem, Hans. That's what best friends are for, buddy. <laughs> you said it, pal. Come on, let's fire this bad boy up. Okay, stand back. You're in for an auditory treat. Oh! Tired of this happening every time the battery in your Juno 106 dies and you lose all the patches? Sure, why not? So, just a quick word of warning before we crack this thing open. By taking out the battery, you're going to lose all of the patches you've got stored in the unit. So the first thing you should do is back them up. Here's how you do it. Due to when the Juno 106 was developed, at the time, the most simple and economic way to save and restore data was through an audio signal. So, you'll have to plug an audio jack into the save outlet in the back of the 106. Then you'll have to plug it into a tape device. <laughs> Wait a minute, a tape recorder? Anybody got one of these lying around? I didn't think so. But that's okay. In this day and age, we can record audio signals in numerous different ways. So I used Audacity a free download that you can use to save and buck about with audio files. Once you're all hooked up and ready to go, press save on your Juno 106. The red light will come on to indicate that saving is in progress, and the main display will go blank. At this point, start recording, and you'll see that the data will begin to come in in the form of an audio file. Once saving is completed, the red light over the save button will go out and the display will return to normal. You can now stop recording and save the file. But how do we know what we've recorded is something the Juno 106 will recognize? Simple, we verify the backup. In order to verify everything, we'll have to plug the output from our recording into the load jack on the back of the 106. Once you've got that hooked up, press the verify button. The light will come on and again the display will go dark. At this point, begin playing back the recording we just made. If the display shows error, it means it was having trouble reading the data, probably because the volume was set too high and it was distorting the signal. So, go back to the beginning and play it back with a lower volume. If everything works properly, the display will return to normal and the verify light will go out over the button and you're done. Don't forget, there are two groups of patches on a 106, so you'll have to switch to Group B and completely repeat the backup and verify process for that group as well. Now that you've got the patches backed up, we can open her up. To do that, we have to remove the end caps so that we can lift the top of the case open and get at the boards inside. We only actually have to take out the top two screws on the side caps, and we don't have to remove the caps themselves. Now we'll take them off the other end. There, we're all set. So now we can open it up. Oh, it's beautiful! The CPU board is what we're interested in at the moment, because that's where the battery lives. You can see there's a fair bit of corrosion on the battery and it's looking a little rough. But hey, after 36 years of no care and attention, you'd look a little rough too. In order to remove the CPU board, the first thing we need to do is disconnect all the connecting cables from it. I'm going to stop things here for a minute just to point something out. These little tabs on the back of the pins actually hold the connectors in place. So by pulling them back, either with a fingernail or a tiny screwdriver, it's a lot easier to take those connectors off. Now, while I didn't feel I needed to mark where each connector came from, I did make the assumption that they would stay put roughly where they came out of, and that assumption would come back to bite me in the butt later. Here's what happened. Most of the connectors are different sizes, however there are two of them that are exactly the same size and in very close proximity to each other. The only way you can really tell the difference is one of them has a yellow wire here, and a grey wire here. Now remember how I said I was assuming that the wires would line up where they were supposed to go? Well, as we'll see in a minute, that wasn't the case. At this point we'd almost be ready to remove the CPU board, except those crazy Roland engineers decided to use a couple of wire ties to hold two of the bundles in place. However, they're cheap to replace, so we'll just cut them out of the way and replace them later. 
four screws later, and the board is clear and ready to be removed. There we have it. By flipping the board over, it's pretty easy to see where the two battery contacts need to be unsoldered. Some careful work with the soldering iron, and we have the battery free and clear. There, it's out. Now it doesn't take an electronics engineer to figure out that the battery that came out had these two tabs welded onto it, and any new battery won't have those. However, I actually came prepared and had pre-purchased a battery clip which we'll put in place. That'll make any future battery replacements a breeze. Sometimes the battery clips won't come with the pins that will line up exactly where they should go on the board, but that's okay, they're pretty easy to bend very gently and then drop into place. Some more careful work with the soldering iron, and pretty soon add the battery clip in place and ready to go. With the battery clip securely soldered in place, we can flip the board over, and now we can install the new battery. Once the battery's in place, the board's ready to be returned to the Juno 106. We'll slide the CPU board back in, lining up the standoffs with the holes in the little board below it. Then we'll tighten in the four screws. And finally, we'll reconnect all those connectors that we took off earlier. I'll stop things here for a second. Remember that assumption I made earlier? I've made a huge mistake. Remember those two connectors with the gray and yellow wires? Well, they've mysteriously swapped places. The gray wire is here, and the yellow wire is here. I put them in backwards. Fortunately, no damage was done, but a word to the wise, be careful. Horrifying mistake aside, it was time to replace the wire ties so we could close this thing up. We'll just close up the top and put the two screws back at each end, and it's as good as new. Well, now that we've got it all back together, we've got one last thing. We have to restore all of the patches back into the memory that we backed up before we started. So here's how you do that. Restoring the patches is almost identical to the verify process with just a couple of small differences. If you haven't already, make sure you connect your output into the load jack in the back of the 106. An important next step is to flip the memory protect switch from one of the side positions to the center. Now, press the load button. The red light should come on and again the display will go dark. At this point, begin playing back the recording we made. When completed, the display will return to normal and the light over the load button will go out. Don't forget to repeat this process for group B. And when you're done restoring, don't forget to flip the memory protect switch back to one of the side positions so that you don't accidentally overwrite one of your patches. Hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.